Hello and welcome to our series Unseen Korea. Um, thank you for making the time. I'm here with Thierry Copiens today from Métier Sans Frontières. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what Métier Sans Frontières is doing. Yeah. First of all, thank you for inviting us. It's highly, highly appreciated. So, from my side, my name is, as you mentioned, Thierry Copiens. I'm a Belgian citizen. Uh, I'm here in Korea for the last seven years. Um, and I've been working with MSF. My first mission in the field was in October 93, so last, last century. Um, I start as an administrator uh, in, in Rwanda, in Bhutan. I've been working many years in, in the humanitarian sector, so not only with MSF, but mainly with, uh, with MSF. Korea is uh, one of the biggest economies in the world now, in the top 10, and uh, it's one of the powerhouses in, in Asia, for sure. So what is the business of Mercedes Sans Frontières then here? Do you, um, are you here also working directly here in Korea or is it mainly leading an office here? Or what is your scope of work? Yeah, so, so today in, in, in Seoul, we, we do not run operation. As you mentioned, uh, it's, it's a growing and a very strong economy here in Korea. So we have uh, four pillars of activities. The first one is that we are recruiting uh, Korean citizens that are, uh, because we have a lot of people being skillful and really committed to engage in humanitarian activities. So we are recruiting uh, medical doctors and non-medical doctors for our missions abroad. Uh, last year we had uh, 28 uh, departures to, to the field. Uh, within the MSF world it's still a small number, but we, 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 we hope and we forecast to to have a growing number of, of Korean uh, citizens that will work for MSF abroad. A second part is that uh, through our communication department it's to sensitize uh, the Korean public about uh, humanitarian affairs with this angle of having a, a medical organization and, and providing a kind of a diversity or diverse point of view of the different humanitarian crises we have uh, worldwide and also to anchor MSF with, the, with its principles and values in the, in the Korean society. We have also another pillar of uh, advocacy, engaging with stakeholders, governmental stakeholders, but also university research and development institute that could help us to uh, increase the quality of our operation and to potentially having also a partnership. And we are also doing uh, fundraising here in Korea. Uh, because MSF made a political choice to have 98, over 98 percent of our funds are private funds, which ensures our independence and, and, and the, the capacity of us to respond quite quickly to any type of crisis worldwide. You said the Korean people are quite um, supportive when it comes to donating or uh, supporting your work. Uh, how does it work? Like um, uh, when you ask for donations or some fundraising or something, what is the overall perception and how much do people in Korea know about Médecins Sans Frontières? Yeah. So the, I would say the, the awareness of, of Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctor Without Borders, it's, it's really increasing. Uh, I really think that we have a lot of support and, and we have a lot of people encouraging us because I think they recognize themselves in some of our guiding principles. Uh, and there are three. First of all, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières is a neutral organization. It's very important to understand this. We don't take side in a conflict. The, the main objective for us is to, to reach the population in need. Uh, secondly, we are an independent organization, so we act regardless of political power, religious power, or any political agenda. And, and this independence, it's also sustainable because most of the funds we have are private funds. That it may come from, from uh, individuals, uh, like you perhaps, and also uh, from, from corporate. And it allows us also to react rapidly, but also to be driven by the needs of the patients and not to be driven by any type of political uh, agenda. And then we have the impartiality also. So it's extremely important that we, and those three values, I think our donors uh, highly appreciate those values, as well as, as our transparency uh, in terms and our accountability of what we are doing, because we are accountable to our patients, that's quite clear. 
that when we provide a medical act, we need to be accountable to them, but we are also accountable to the donors who support MSF in their daily, in daily actions. The, and the Korean public is, is very responsive, very positive. And I think it, may, it could be, uh, and because a lot of people, they still remember the time of the war in the 50s. A lot of people know what it means to be a displaced person over refugees. And when you come to access to, to medical uh, aid or access to medical service, we have seen no in the past three years with the COVID-19 how important it is that people have access to medical service, especially when you are in a crisis situation. And again, nobody should be left behind, that's quite clear. How would you say, like, because you said it's very touching, can you think of a particular episode in, in your life here in Korea over the last seven years where you said, like, wow, that really moved me or that was really special to me or something? With MSF, uh, I would say there, there are many. But the, the one who just come up snow just to, in my mind, it's that uh, one day I received a letter from an old woman in their probably 70s. And, and she was explaining that she was living in really uh, basic conditions, but she was really touched by, by what she saw on TV and, and she started to inquire about uh, different organizations and MSF was one amongst them. And she decided to, to donate a small amount uh, to, to MSF. But it's, it was not a wealthy woman. She's really, uh, I would say, living with uh, really minimum standards. And that was quite touching, in fact, to see someone who was able to connect with the reality outside, probably because she faced also in her life such type of situation. And I have still this letter in my office. But there are many touching, uh, touching stories, but this one was quite touching. It's interesting. Uh, so what can people do to support you here? Like uh, you mentioned uh, um, raising funds or doing internet work. Or like, what can people do? But I think there are different ways. It's, it's uh, for um, people having at least two years of experience being fluent in English or a second language. Uh, they can apply to, to MSF if there are uh, medical people or non-medical. On, on our website, we have different type of profile we are looking for, and, and those who want to commit to engage with MSF, who feel also comfortable with our values of neutrality, impartiality, and independence, and also that we are guided by uh, medical ethics also, I would invite them to apply for, uh, for us. Uh, the selection process can be quite tough, it's true, but, but uh, it's, it's a way to, to engage. Donation, it's extremely important, as, as I mentioned, because it allows our organization to remain independent and really driven by the needs of the patient. We want to make really a difference for our patient in any type of acts we are implementing in the field. To close it, um, if you can say one thing to the people watching this, uh, our series, what would it be like uh, uh, any particular message from you? Together we are stronger. I think that would be my, my, my statement. Uh, today, we are no more in the 19th centuries, we are no more in the 20th centuries, and uh, each event worldwide has an impact. Uh, and we see this with what's actually happening in, in Ukraine as an impact on our daily life. Uh, but we should not forget also uh, the hidden crisis, the crisis that nobody speaks about. Speaking about Afghanistan, Yemen, uh, Central Republic of, of Africa, uh, Palestine, also, uh, and all those hotspots in South Sudan, North Sudan. And I think we should keep, um, I would say, um, uh, a fair um, attention to all those crises because as human beings, and it's not to fall into a kind of philosophical debate, but as human beings, we should be concerned by, by everyone, of course. And uh, I'm not speaking now as if I'm a head of state, I'm speaking as a, the director of MSF and myself being a volunteer for 20 years. And I think it's important to connect people and to build bridge. Uh, we cannot live in an isolated way, in a manner it's not more, it's not anymore possible. Yeah, thank you very much for taking the time. And thank you. Today. <laughs> thank you.